Hi folks, this is Nat, and this is going to be your video lesson on identifying probabilities as either theoretical or experimental. There are two sorts of probability. We'll talk about the differences today. Um, and we also want to be able to calculate both, which turns out to be pretty easy. The big thing to understand in this lesson is going to be what's the difference between the two types of probability. And if you didn't catch it already, there are theoretical probabilities, and there are experimental probabilities. And believe it or not, up to this point, you in your life has had experience with both of these sorts of things. You probably haven't used these words to describe them before, but that's okay. We're going to learn them today. Let's start off with theoretical probability. And up to this point in our probability unit, we've mostly been dealing with theoretical probabilities. Almost everything we've talked about has been based on the idea of theoretical probability. And I like to use the analogy of a dice or a die to talk about theoretical probability um, because theoretical probability is like what we do when we think about a dice. When we think about a die, one of the key things about saying, well, what's likely to happen is that we know everything that can happen. Or in other words, we know all the possible outcomes. The other thing about a die is in order to tell you the chances of rolling, say, a 4 on a die, I never actually have to have rolled the die. It doesn't require any actual doing. I can calculate the probability right from the get-go because I know all the outcomes. And the, <clears throat> the other thing is because I know all the outcomes, even if I do start rolling the die and something weird happens, like I get a 1 four times in a row, I don't change my probabilities because of what's happened. Um, it never changes. So I know, for example, that the probability of rolling a 4 is always 1 out of 6. 1 in 6 times I expect to roll a 4, and if for some reason I roll a 4 8 times in a row, that doesn't change my estimation of what the probability is. I still continue to expect to get a 4 about 1 in every 6 times. That doesn't change in theoretical probability. Experimental probability, on the other hand, is like the weather. And the weather is actually one of the big places we uh, see experimental probability on a regular basis. Um, all of our weather forecasts are more or less based on experimental probabilities. Um, if we say tomorrow we expect it to rain, well, that's because in the past, based on experimental probability, we've seen that it rains when the conditions are like they are. But one of the things to keep in mind is that uh, experimental probability is very different than theoretical probability. Um, because again, if you think about the weather, we don't really honestly know everything that can happen. You hear all the time about record high temperatures, um, you know, or record low temperatures. The temperature got as low as it had ever been for this day in recorded history or recorded weather history. Um, and experimental probability, me, when we calculate our probabilities that way, mean it means we're completely unprepared for those sorts of things. We didn't know they were possible because they'd never happened before. Um, because experimental probability is entirely based off of past events. We say, for example, in the past, 80% of the time the weather has looked like it looks like today, it has rained. Therefore, it must be an 80% chance of rain. And so it makes it harder to predict uh, things that are unusual because we're only saying, well, this could happen because it's happened before. And that's how experimental probability works. The other thing, though, is that means that experimental probability has to be more flexible. It has to change. So when we get that record high temperature day in the middle of winter, now we know that's possible, and our experimental probabilities will change to uh, accommodate that new possibility. So if I was going to summarize the difference between theoretical and experimental probabilities, I'd really focus on these things. Theoretical probabilities are the probabilities we calculate when we know all the possible outcomes. And experimental probabilities are probabilities that are based off of past events. Um, those, if you think about those two things and what sort of thing you're doing when you calculate a probability, you probably won't uh, 
incorrectly figure whether it's theoretical or experimental. Let's do a quick example. Let's say that I've got a bag of marbles and I've got a really lousy drawing of one right here. Um, and it contains, it looks like, five orange marbles, three purple marbles, and two pink marbles. And I want to know the probability of drawing a pink marble. Well, looking at this bag, I can say, okay, I see two pink marbles in there. So there's 10 things total. So I would predict that I have a 2 in 10 chance, or if I'm being fancy, a 1 in 5 chance, if I reduce it, of drawing a pink marble. And that's my probability. Well, let's stop for a second. What sort of probability did I calculate there? We might start by asking ourselves the question of, well, I was talking about the probability of drawing a pink marble. Did I actually need to draw a pink marble? And the answer is no. I don't think I took anything out of this imaginary bag. I just kind of figured the probability is one-fifth. Um, in this case, that's a pretty good clue that this is a theoretical probability. I knew all the outcomes to start with, and so I didn't have to do anything to know the chance of pulling a pink marble out of that bag. So that is theoretical probability. The alternative might be like a magical mystery bag. Let's imagine this bag has the bizarre quality that I can never look inside of it, so I don't know what is in it, but I can take things out and put them back in. And in the past, as I reach into this bag, I have pulled blue marbles, I've pulled, I don't know, green marbles, and I've pulled uh, an orange marble. And when I pulled blue marbles, I've actually in the past pulled four blue marbles, and I've pulled eight green marbles, and I've actually only ever pulled one orange marble out. That was kind of a surprise. Um, so if I'm wondering what the probability is, I can take into account while, you know, I can't look into this thing, I can think what chances are there of pulling you know, things out in the future. I'll, I don't have much information, so I'm probably going to base it off of um, things I've seen. I'm not going to say red, well, there's a good chance of pulling red, because I've never pulled a red marble before. So let's say I want to know the probability of pulling a blue. It looks like out of the last 13 times that I've pulled marbles, four of those were blue. And so based off my past experience, I'm going to say that four out of 13 times in the future, maybe, I would expect to pull blue as well. What I've calculated in this case is experimental probability. And I know that because I'm basing my probabilities off of these past experiences not off of knowledge of what's in this bag, because I don't know what's in the bag. That's really different than up here, because I didn't have to do anything at all. I knew all the outcomes, and so I knew the probability of pulling each one. Back here on my mystery bag, let's say the next time I do this, I actually do pull a red marble the next time through. Now I've got one red marble. That's going to change my expectations for the future. Now I'm going to think to myself, well, actually, I can pull a red marble, and maybe the probability is about 1 out of 14 now, because 1 out of the 14 times I pulled, I got a red marble. So it's not likely to happen, but I know now it's possible. So my um, probabilities are going to need to account for that. So while my theoretical probability up here is never going to change because I know what's in here. I'm not going to see any surprises. My experimental probability might change as I uncover new possibilities as I gain experience. So recognizing that these two things are actually very different, experimental and theoretical probabilities, it's worth asking which one would I rather have. And we actually have uh, really good ways of thinking about this, because sometimes we have both. We have, you know, experimental and theoretical probabilities we can look at. For example, if I asked you, what's the probability of a, a couple having a boy or a girl baby? Without knowing anything about the couple or, you know, who they are, what's happened to them in the past, you would probably say, oh, well, that's about a half probability. They have a 50-50 chance of a boy versus a girl. 
In other words, theoretical probability tells me that half the time we'll get a boy, half the time we'll get a girl. That's, you know, supported by the way that cells divide and, you know, uh, human reproduction works. Sometimes we might get more information, though. For example, I have a family uh, where there are actually three boys and no girls. But for the sake of argument, let's invent a sister for me and say that three out of four times in the past, there were boys in my family. And one out of four times in the past, there were girls. So the experimental, the fake experimental probability in this scenario would tell me that there's a three-quarter chance that in the future, you know, my next sibling would be a boy, and there's a one-quarter chance that my next sibling would be a girl. And we've got to pick one. Um, they're not both equally good. And if you think about it, generally speaking, I would rather know all the outcomes. I would rather know how things work. Um, theoretical probability is better. If I have the choice of experimental results versus good, complete theoretical probability, I'm going to go theoretical probability every time. If, even if I flipped a coin ten times in a row and it's been heads, 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 I am still going to say that there's a one-half chance that it is heads or tails the next time through. Um, theoretical probability is the better of the two. And here's a good reason why. If we think about our original bag scenario from a minute ago, um, I would much rather know exactly what's in the bag and to be able to tell you how likely it was to pull, say, an orange. If I just have the results, like in the mystery bag, and I'm basing it off of what I've seen, my results are really incomplete, and you might have that experience where red's in there, but I haven't seen it for a long time, so I don't know all the things that can happen. Um, and again, that kind of supports the idea that if I get to pick, I'm going with theoretical probability. Knowing both, I'm going to probably opt for my theoretical probability as the one I listen to. That said, there are things that I can do to make experimental probability better. If I'm dealing with my mystery bag, I can draw more and more and more. Let's say instead of basing my experience on just 14 draws, I actually go a lot further and I find out, well, actually, this is 24 blues and 88 greens and 21 oranges and uh, 11 reds. And those are the things I've pulled out over time. My experimental probability gets better and better and better with the more experience that I have. What's more is that experimental probability math tells us, gets closer and closer to theoretical probability the more data you collect. So if you have to have experimental probability, you want to get as much as you can, because that's going to make it as close to theoretical, which is better, as you can possibly get. So if we go back to my baby example, let's say my, my poor mother went and had like 50 more babies. With only four babies, it's easy for things to go weird. But when she has 50 babies, what we're probably going to discover is maybe she has 26 boys and 24 girls. And so now our experimental probabilities end up looking a lot closer to our theoretical probabilities. And that's because we just got more data. And that is what we always expect to happen. The more experimental results we get, the closer we expect our probabilities to look like our theoretical probabilities. And here are your practice problems for the lesson. Um, for each of these, make sure that you both answer the question by giving the probability that you're being asked for and tell whether it was experimental or theoretical probability that you calculated. Good luck.